What's up, guys, and welcome, Daily Theologian. So glad you're here. Psychology, self-esteem, let's talk about it. Is it helpful or is it something worse in disguise? You're not going to want to miss this one. So what's the problem with self-esteem? Well, there are many problems, but Dr. John MacArthur, again, is going to cut right to the issue. And I agree with this because psychology in many ways is a parallel religion, especially about the anthropology of man and our ability to deal with things like sin and problems of the heart. Check this out. Psychologists have created this thing called self-esteem. That is a satanic idea. You're not as important as you think you are. You're far less important than you think you are, and so am I. So are all of us. You're not better than you think you are. You're worse than you think you are. You are far worse than you think you are, and so am I. In God's eyes, you are inconceivably sinful. In your own eyes, you're something wonderful. God hates pride. He hates haughty eyes. It destroys love. It destroys relationships, all of them. What is the killer of all relationships? Pride. Pride kills all relationships. It kills care. It kills sacrifice. It kills kindness. It kills the supreme virtue of all virtues, humility. When pride comes, then comes dishonor. Pride doesn't honor you. It dishonors you. Honor belongs to the humble. So pride kills all relationships. That's worth writing down because it's true. And when you look at the psychological landscape in our country, people are getting drugs for everything. And now I'm not saying some of these things aren't warranted, but generally speaking, this is an attempt to remove personal responsibility and their entire schools of thought politically and ideologically that try to negate personal responsibility. It's always somebody else's fault. It's how you were born or where you were born or uh, how you're treated because of how you look and things of that nature instead of the character. But God looks at the heart. And the problem with this is the total depravity of man is neglected in this thing. And basically, it's a parallel religion with a false anthropology. When you look at what the Bible says, Paul constantly said, I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and fear, much trembling. My speech and message were not in words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. In other words, Paul wasn't trying to be eloquent and persuasive ideologically, though he did that, he was relying on the power of the Holy Spirit to regenerate the dead heart, to respond in repentance and faith towards the message that he preached, which is foolishness to those that are perishing. The natural person receives not the things of God. They cannot ray comfort and also 1 Corinthians. So when you look at the issue, it's medicating people. It's teaching people you can be whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. There's no personal responsibility. You're not created a certain way, but of course you are. And of course that matters very much to God. In uh, the book of uh, first, uh, excuse me, I believe it's second Timothy one, seven, God gave a spirit, not of fear, but of love, power, and of self-control. He gave us a new mind. He gave us the right mind. And uh, it's the mind of Christ. And that's the issue is the heart. Psychology is a word on the soul, but they have no basis for understanding the soul apart from God's word. They can make observations and things, but people like Freud and many of these psychological figures are evil. I mean, they were pure evil. They were hedonists. They were into all kinds of crazy, weird stuff. And they've destroyed children. They destroyed families for decades, for centuries now at this point. And we need to be very, very skeptical, almost, well, not skeptical. We need to say repent because this is evil. Check this out. He had them do you think that those Galileans were worse sinners than other Galileans? They suffered in this way? No, I tell you, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And the core issue here is it's personal responsibility for sin. People must repent. You must see yourself as far more worthy of God's judgment and far less worthy of esteeming yourself. We need to esteem Christ. We need to esteem God. The God man that fulfilled the law paid an infinite hell that died and rose and is coming back. You must repent and believe that because otherwise you will always be trusting in yourself. You'll always try to improve your mood or your, your value in light of what society says. But God's word is what matters. It's God's word that endures forever. And we must judge ourselves by the law, the Ten Commandments, and see we are guilty. We deserve righteous wrath and hell. But Jesus paid that debt, died paid on the cross, died, and is risen and reigning, fulfilled the law in his perfect life, etc. You must repent and believe. You must also take a moment and hammer that like button. Like the 95 Theses. Leave a comment below, but psychology, self-esteem, this whole way of thinking is literally destroying our nation right now. It's, this, is lit, this is at the core. Pride, no fear of God. 
Check it out. Leave a comment below. And remember to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much, and God bless.